Agape. So good to see you and have you join in with us virtually. I thank God for you and thank God for another Wednesday of the Word on Wednesday. Uh, let's pray. Eternal God, we are grateful for this time of teaching and sharing. We thank you for all that you've done for us to this very present time. We thank you for watching over others and protecting each of each and every one of us. God, we pray now our hearts are open to receive your word and then receive your word and apply it to our daily lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, again, it's so good to have each of you here. And we're going to continue in in, uh, in Psalms 30 and uh, complete it tonight on what we have been talking about. We've been in Psalms 30, and tonight we're going to finish up uh, the verses 8 through 12. Now let me just reiterate uh, where we've been, what we've talked about. The first week we talked about the rejoicing after God's discipline, which was found in uh, verses 1 through 5. And then the second week, we discussed the reason for God's discipline with David. And then last week, uh, we talked about the reality of God's discipline in verse 7, uh, where God chast chastised David by removing his presence from him because of his sin. The, Lord's dis the Lord disciplined David by withdrawing, withdrawing from him, allowing him to see his need for God, and where previously the Lord had favored him with many blessings. So we remember that uh, what God did in his discipline was just remove himself from him, withdrew himself. And so David uh, ended up realizing how much he needed God and realized that it was through God that he was able to do what he, he had been doing, that the blessings he had received were from God. But when God withdrew himself, he withdrew his blessings. And so tonight we're going to move into this last portion of Psalms 30 and talk about the removal of God's discipline. The removal of God's discipline. David, having pleaded his case in repentance, received the forgiveness of God that turned his sadness into shouts of joy. Here we're going to begin uh, looking at uh, verses 8 through 10. Uh, it says, Lord, I call to you. I sought favor from my Lord. What gain is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your truth? Lord, listen and be gracious to me. Lord, be my helper. No, notice here, notice here what, what David is doing. He says, Lord, I called you. Wait, look, look what he says. Lord, I called you. What, what David is doing, beloved, David declared as he reacted to the swift chastisement of God. In other words, David was doing his own thing until he realized that God had withdrew himself from him. And when he withdrew himself, he realized uh, that he was being punished. And so David says, Lord, I called you. Now, David has declared as he reacted to the swift chastisement of God. He declared that. But now notice here what, what got his attention. This is this is this blew my mind. This, notice he reacted to the chastisement of God. In other words, he was feeling the pain of discipline. That's what David felt the pain of discipline and cried out, Lord, I called you. Now notice, pain, check this out, pain will get your attention. That's what happened. I, I'm a living witness. Pain will get your attention. Now, David was doing his own thing. He was in sin. He was, he was moving along on his own pace. But it wasn't until he felt God's chastisement, the pain of God's war, war, wrath, that made him change his look, change his direction, change his tone. 
pain will get your attention. I remember uh, growing up and, and, and the elder folks would tell you, don't go do that, Freddie, don't go do that, don't go do that. And you listen, oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, if you do this, this is what's gonna happen. No, I, and because they were just talking, I, I didn't really take it to heart. But it wasn't until I made the mistake of doing what they told me not to do that got my attention when it was pain. And I'm back when I grew up, the pain often was that belt, that switch, that that got your attention. And so what David is dealing with is that God got his attention through the pain of the discipline. That's what I grew up, many of you grew up in this, this era that I grew up or even before. Pain was discipline. The discipline of pain made you move right, made you sit up straight, made you talk correctly, made you have the right manners, made you follow the rule. Because why? There was discipline. The pain of discipline got your attention. And so once, once it got my attention, I tried very hard not to have to go through the pain again. Because what? The pain got my attention. And that's what David is dealing with here. He says, Lord, I called you. David declares it. He says, I called you. He reacts to the swift chastisement of God. Notice what he says. He says, Lord, I called you. How many times did you call? Mama, I heard mama, daddy. Oh yeah, when, when that, that pain, the pain, <laughs> that belt, that switch hit, who'd you call? I called, I called mama, mama, daddy. You know, because why? That, that was what got my attention. And so David is dealing with that. He, he says, Lord, I called you. I called you. Look, he said, now look, 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 David, David cried to the Lord. That's what he said, Lord, I, I called you. David cried out to the Lord, not on the basis of his own merit, but for mercy. Now, now, now put, put a pin in that. He calls out, he cries out to the Lord, not on the basis of his merit, but for mercy. Let me go back again. I remember when I got that switch, when they used that belt on me, and back in the day, they used the extension cord sometimes. And, 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 and we would call out the name, Mama, Daddy. It wasn't because of merit. It was because what? I need some mercy. This is hurting me. This is too painful. Will you please have some mercy on me? Uh, so David cries out to the Lord, not on the basis of his own merit, but for mercy. No, 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 no. That's what he's doing. He's he's crying out for mercy. No, he 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 has his reasons with God. He he begins to reason with God. Now look, look, look. He says in the text, what is there to gain with my death? What, Lord, 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 what is there to gain with my death? If I die, I can't praise you. And how can I praise you from the death? Now notice what he's saying. He says, now he's crying out to God, not because of his own merit, but because of mercy, but for some mercy. And so he begins to reason with God. It's, it's like a child. It's like, it's like many of us have been a child. You're, you're in trouble. So now we're trying to reason with our parent or parents about why we shouldn't be punished. And, and so, so David says, he begins to reason with God. He says, what is there to gain with my death? Let me, let me go back to the text here. Let me go back to the text and see if we can see this. Let me go back to the text here. Let me see. Lord, I called you. I saw favor from my Lord. Look at his, look what he says in verse 9. Here's what we're talking about. What gain is there in my death if I go to the pit, which means if I if I go down, will dust praise you? That's what he says. Look, so so David, David begins to reason with God. What is there to gain with my death? If I die, I can't praise you. How can I praise you from the dust? He's, he's trying to reason with God because he realizes based on my merit, yes, I deserve this. But if there's some mercy, let's talk about this. Let, let's have a conversation, God. 
Lord, why, 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 why? What is there to gain? Is there really going to be anything to gain for me to die? I, besides, if I die, how can I praise you? How can I praise you from the dust? Look, isn't that amazing? David going to, is recycling this thing. Now he's beginning to go back and say, look, it's all about me praising, giving you praise, God. Lord, I can't praise you if I'm dead. I can't praise you from the dust. He's reasoning with God because of his sin. Because he realizes the pain of discipline. I acknowledge the pain. And Lord, I'm calling you because I need some mercy. I need some mercy. Let's, let's look at this. Let's look at this. Let me go here. David, having learned his lesson, pleaded. Look, verse 10. Lord, listen and be gracious to me. Lord, be my helper. Look, look, it's the David, David having learned his lesson. Now, David has learned his lesson because he, he's going through the discipline and the pain is so bad, he's crying out for some mercy. He pleaded, Lord, listen and be gracious to me. Lord, be my helper. Look, what, what David is doing is giving out a cry of repentance. That's what he did. Look, look, let me go back. Let's look. Verse 10, Lord, listen and be gracious to me. Lord, be my helper. This was his cry of repentance. Now here, check this out, beloved. The only way for divine discipline to be removed is there has to be a cry of repentance. The only way God will remove his discipline from you, his divine discipline, is only when you give a cry of repentance. You cannot escape and be removed from his discipline until you have a cry of repentance, until you acknowledge your sin, until you ask him for some mercy, when you ask him to forgive you. So the key is divine discipline is not removed until there is a cry of repentance. And that's why some folks still are going through the same discipline, have not been removed from it because they just won't give a cry of repentance. Look what he said. Look at he says, be my helper. In other words, he's saying, be merciful to me. Be merciful to me. That, 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 that's what he says. Lord, be my helper. Be merciful. Lord, I just need some mercy. David acknowledges, he realizes that his situation can only be relieved when there has been a cry repentance and he asks God for some mercy. That's it. So David, David surrenders. He, he surrenders his whole will. He gives up his pride. His, he says, first, I'm going to give a cry of repentance. The only way for divine dis discipline to be removed is because I'm giving a cry of repentance. Be my helper to be merciful to me. That, that's, what he, that's what David is saying. That's what David is. He says, I'm getting there. I, I'm giving a cry. David is now prostrate. He is giving it all. He is surrendering it all of his will. And he's crying out for, he's giving a cry of repentance. Because that's the only way to divide discipline is to remove. When you are refusing to give a repentance, a cry of repentance, God does not remove his discipline from you. He says, be my helper. Be merciful to me, God. Be merciful. In other words, I deserve it, but give me some slack. Cut me some slack. All right, here's the, here's the next part I want to share of the, of the text, uh, verses 11 and 12. It says, you turn my lament into dancing. You remove my sackcloth and clothe me in gladness. Verse 12, so that I can sing to you and not be silent. Lord my God, I will praise you forever. Let me say it again. You turn my lament into dancing. You remove my sackcloth and clothe me in gladness. Or, or the lament is also uh, in the new, in the uh, King James Version, uh, it will be used as a wailing. You turn my wailing into dancing. Okay. All right. So David begins here first by demonstrating signs of remorse and repentance. 
And, and back in that time, the, the way you, sh you showed your remorse and repentance was by wailing in sackcloth. When you wailed in sackcloth, that was a means of repentance. So David now demonstrates, because the, the repentance, I, I believe when you repent, there ought to be something, some demonstrated signs. There ought to be some signs of your repentance or when you repent. So David demonstrates signs of remorse and repentance by wailing in sackcloth, which means a type of repenting. So now David here knew his confession of sin was heard by God. He knew it was heard by God, and the divine hand of discipline was removed. Let's see, let's let's talk about how that, how that happened. Did you turn my laminate? into sack, uh, my wailing into dancing, my lament into dancing, you remove my sackcloth and clothe me in gladness so that I can sing to you and not be silent. Lord, Lord, my God, I praise you forever. So now, how did David know that this, that God had removed, removed that discipline? How did, how did he know God had hurt his confession? Because he said, the Lord had turned his wailing, the results of divine inflicted pain into dancing. Let's go back and see. This is what I'm, here, here's what I'm talking about here. Look here. You turn my lament, my wailing into dancing. So that's how he knew. That's how he knew it was accepted. That's how he, he, he knew God had heard him and the divine hand of discipline was removed because he said, you have turned my laminate or my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me in gladness. So, so he said, the Lord had turned his wailing into dancing. All right. He said that there was that divinely inflicted pain that God was putting into my, my life, he took it away and turned it into dancing. Now, now, now here, here, I'm gonna I'm gonna mess you up now, beloved. Dancing is is an expression of rejoicing of the heart. Now look, dancing is an expression of the rejoicing of of the heart. Now, now notice here, let, let, let me put this in layman's terms that will help you understand uh, dancing, what dancing the expression of, of the rejoicing heart. How many of you remember when back in the day when you knew there was happy hour, uh, a certain a certain night of the week was was the night you wanted to be at the club, the dance hall, or Friday as you got paid. You've been thinking all day, oh man, we're going out tonight. We're going to the club tonight. We're going to the dance hall tonight. Oh, I can't wait. And the closer it came time to get there, the more excited you you became. When you drove up to the building, you were excited because you could hear the thumping of the music and people come around. And as soon as you hit that front door, paid your cover fee, got on in your feet started moving because why? There was dancing. You know why? Da dancing is an expression of the rejoicing in our heart. You will never dance when your heart is not rejoicing. Go ahead. I better say it again. You never dance when your heart is not in a rejoicing frame of mind or frame uh, framework. When your heart is not rejoicing, you do not dance. But when your when your heart is rejoicing, when you're rejoicing of the heart, when there's rejoicing in the heart, guess what? You got to step on you. You 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 you're you're rejoicing, and so what? You can't wait to get on the floor. In fact, they can't pull you off the floor because why? Uh, I'm rejoicing in my heart, and it can even go spiritual. See, folks, really around some folks, you see some folks dancing in the church because they're rejoicing in of uh, they have rejoicing in the heart. You don't know their story. You don't know what they've been through. You don't know what what they had to go through to get there. You don't know how God has kept on blessing them and making a way out of nowhere because they're so rejoicing in their heart. They've got to dance, 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 dance all night. Because why? There's, that's an expression of the rejoicing of the heart. And see, sometimes as Christians, we look at dancing all the wrong way. They're rejoicing in the heart. I can't stop my feet from moving. When I think about the goodness of God and all he's done for me, man, there's rejoicing in my heart. The rejoicing of the heart allows me to do what? Dance. 
So dancing is an expression. So David danced because why? The rejoicing of the heart. David's rejoicing was because he brought me up. God gave me some mercy. God permitted me to make it through. I didn't deserve it. I didn't do anything to that. What I did deserve was death. But God gave me some mercy. Is there anybody out here who's watching to realize you are where you are? You are who you are because of the mercy, the grace, and the mercy of God in your life so I can help but there, there ought to be some dancing in your heart. There's a rejoicing that calls you to dance because of what he's done for you. Because he 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 heard your cry, your, your repentance. He heard the cry of your repentance and provided you mercy. The pain that you were going through, they were divinely inflicted, is no longer there. And so now he's turned your wailing into dancing. And that's what David said. After all I've been through, he changed that. So I've got to rejoice. So dancing is an expression of the rejoicing of the heart. Yeah. He said, so I, I don't have that any longer. Let, let, let's, let's go here. Here. I wanna, I'm going to finish up with this a little bit. You see, David's heart was able to sing. He said, so I'm going to sing. See, he said, now, not only am I dancing, but I've got a song. See, David's heart was able to sing to the Lord and not be silent. When, when, as old folks said, when you know that you know that you know that you know. Not only did he take my wailing and turn it into dancing, but there is a song in my heart. See, because there's a song, I'm able to sing a song and not be silent. So I can't, I can't keep it to myself. I can't stay silent. That's why you've got to understand when you're in the worship experience, especially when you're in the building and there's somebody next to you or somebody a row away, away from you and they begin to sing and they begin to dance and they begin to shout. It's not because of, 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 of there, there's some issue that they're living in sin. It's because of God brought them out. God forgave them. They cried out. They wailed out in sackcloth. God heard their cry. God provided mercy. And he turned their wailing. He turned their wailing into dancing. And he put a song on their heart. There's a heart. Their heart has a song that they have to sing. They can't keep silent. When you have been brought out, when God has looked beyond what you've been through and who you've been, but he's looked beyond that and blessed you and brought you out, you can't help but be noisy. You gotta be. You can't be silent any longer. See that? that I think that's one of the issues that we deal with sometimes as Christians. We want to stay silent when the God has blessed us and, and provided mercy for us. And so what happens sometimes when we stay so silent, others who come in, who's going through things that 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 we've experienced, they think they're they're the oddballs. They think something's wrong with them because everybody else acts like nothing's ever been done for them or they've never been in a situation that has not been, been uh, ungodly and God has never brought them out. And so then what we have is in the individuals who are going through some stuff who's thinking something's wrong with them. But the issue is not really something wrong with them. Something's wrong with us because we're still silent. We're still silent. We're still silent. So David's heart was able to sing to the Lord and not be silent. Can you imagine this evening how David was? One moment he's wailing in sackcloth. The next moment he's dancing and singing because of what God has done, what God has brought him out of. All right, let me, let me go to the next thing. I think I got one more thing. So, so here, here, here's where I want to go. David, David here has come full circle. He's come full circle. Remember at the beginning of, of uh, Psalms 30, David starts from the back. He's, he's already celebrating. And then we go through the process of what got him to that point. And so David, at the end of this chapter, the end of this psalm, David has been relieved of that pain. 
God has brought him out. God has forgiven him. But David had to go through the repentance. He had to cry. He had to have a cry of repentance. And when he realized God had heard him, the reason why he heard God had heard his prayer is because that pain was taken away. And when the pain is taken away of our, of our sin, it ought to move us from sitting, from, from crying and wailing to dancing and singing. You ought to have a dance. You ought to have a song for who, what God has done for you. So beloved, I praise God for you. I thank God for you. I'm praying just like David, that, that when, when it comes to your sin, that there's a cry of repentance. And that cry of repentance, when God hears you, he will take that divine, that divine pain off of you. He chastised David because David thought it was all about him. David began to, as the old folks said, begin to smell himself. And so God had to, to, to bring him back down to help him understand, it is me, it is me, it is me, your Lord, your God, that is doing what he's doing. I'm blessing your life, but it's not because that you did it on you, it's because I'm blessing your life. And I'm here to tell you, beloved, God wants to bless your life. God wants to bless your life, but you have to be committed to him. And if for some reason you have strayed off and you think it's all about you, because for some reason things begin to fall into place and you begin to think it was all about you, but it isn't. It was the blessings of God. It is the blessings of God. So don't be like David. But if you're like David, you need to cry repentance and cry it out. Humble yourself till God hears you and relieves you of that pain, takes that pain away. But when he takes that pain away, there ought to be some dancing and there ought to be a song on your heart. God bless you tonight. I pray that as we, we dealt with Psalms 30, that it, something has been said, something's been shared that will help you and encourage you in your walk with Christ. If you're looking and, and you're on here and uh, you've been trying to figure out some things for your life, I'm here to invite you to come meet a man named Jesus. He knows all about you. The first thing you do is first admit that you're a sinner. Secondly, acknowledge that he is the son of God. And then to realize he's knocking at your door. He wants to come in. Invite him as the Lord come into my life. I'm a sinner, not saved by grace. I believe that Jesus died for my sins, that I can have a right to, the, to eternal life. Lord, I hear you knocking. I'm opening the door. Please come in. That's all you have to do, beloved. Our address will come across the screen. Please contact me. Let me know. Send your prayer request in. Uh, if you send your, your name, I can identify and just say, uh, this is so-and-so. I'm praying in, in on behalf of so-and-so. If you'd like me to get back with you, put your phone number on there. And then I'll just pray. I'll pray over your prayer request. Uh, God bless you. Uh, my wife sends her love to you. We're praying for all of, all of you. We love you. Let me reiterate, uh, starting in June, we're, we're moving to have outdoor services in the parking lot for that month, as long as the weather's not bad. Uh, We'll be able to have our services in the parking lot, drive, bring your car, drive your car, turn to the radio station that we give you, and you can stay in the coolness of your car and, and hear the word of God preached in the parking lot. Prayerfully in July, we'll move back in. Uh, we'll make some few restrictions, uh, make some alterations with our singing uh, because we are not over this. By no means are we over this. Uh, we'll have masks. I would recommend you wearing a mask because uh, you may not know who's sitting next to you if it's not family, and you may not know if they've gotten a shot. And so uh, I, I'm going to recommend that, uh, that you wear a mask. We'll have masks there available, uh, but we're going to uh, move to be in the sanctuary uh, second Sunday in July. That's our plan. Uh, so we're going to move that way. Uh, thank God for all of you, again, who are tuning in consistently, or even if you're not consistent, that when you do tune in, for Wednesday, uh, the word on Wednesday, uh, for uh, 
Sunday morning virtual worship. Thank you for those who connected to Sunday school. Uh, those are uh, Tuesday, midday, Zoom, Bible study. Thank you. Uh, one thing I will reiterate is that when we start meeting on Sunday, get back in the sanctuary, we're going to make some alterations because we still will not be having Sunday school. Uh, we're just going to be having service. So we'll work on seeing how we're going to do a Sunday morning Sunday morning, uh, Sunday school. Uh, we're going to make some alterations. Probably I'll get with them and uh, those instructors and see if they want to do it uh, early, early Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, or it's Saturday. So we'll we'll let you know based on what they desire to do. But we're still not going to try to congregate people downstairs in the other building for Sunday school to kids. We're just going to work through our summer. So in the fall, we can kind of get back to those things. So uh, thank you for being patient family. Thank you. Uh, you don't really know what it means to, uh, to me to know uh, your love for God and your love for agape and, and you're trusting me as your pastor. So thank you for staying connected and thank you for uh, your financial uh, agreement with God because your tithe is with God, not the church. So thank you for your commitment to God and continue to know that uh, based on what you do, God is doing for you. Uh, so thank you. Thank you for your love gifts. Thank you uh, for those who do that. You don't have to, but you do it. So I love you. Thank you for everything. Hey, I'm praying for each of you to have a blessed week, a safe week, and then in turn be a blessing to someone else. Let's pray. Eternal God, we thank you for this time. We pray now for blessings upon each and every one. We thank you for touching and agreeing on your word. God, watch over us until we can meet again. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said, amen. God bless you. We'll see you soon.